Hello, I'm Phil, and this is the first in a series of videos on assembly language programming. Uh, in this series, we'll be focusing on the x86-64 architecture, which means 64-bit, and we'll be using the FASM assembler, um, otherwise known as the FLAT assembler. I don't know why it's called FLAT assembler, but um, if you know the story behind that, please let me know. Um, let's start by looking at how we can acquire the flat assembler. Uh, if we go to our browser and type in FASM, uh, one of the first items that shows up should be flatassembler.net. And uh, we'll look at the download section. And here we can see um, the operating systems available for flat, or flat assembler distributions, binaries available for uh, different operating systems. And you might notice uh, the absence of OS X. So if you have an Apple computer, you can't directly run the flat assembler. You may be able to get it to run with the Unix version here. I haven't tried that. But uh, in general, you can't run flat assembler on OS X. However, if you still want to run, run through these tutorials, you can either dual boot your system and install a, perhaps a Linux version or Windows side by side with your um, OS X operating system. Or if you don't want to do that, you can actually install a virtual machine on your OS X instance and uh, install uh, a copy of Linux or Windows. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail how to do that, but in general what you want to do is uh, get a virtual machine, such as VirtualBox, uh, made by Oracle. Let's go to VirtualBox. And VirtualBox uh, is made by Oracle, and it um, is actually a good free um, virtual machine that can uh, virtualize a, a processor for you. And then what you'll need after you've downloaded and installed VirtualBox is to install an operating system on it. VirtualBox supports a number of operating systems including Windows and Linux. Um, if you want to install Linux on there, uh, Ubuntu is actually a good um, distribution of um, the Linux operating system and you can go to ubuntu.com and download the ISO for the uh, desktop version and then install that on your virtual machine that you create. Um, and that in general is how you would set up uh, a Linux um, operating system on a virtual machine and then you'll be able to, so if you have um, if you're running OS 10, you'll be able to run uh, Linux on your machine and then get Flat Assembler. So let's go back to Flat Assembler. Let's download our version. I'm running Linux, so let's download the Linux version. And that will go to our Downloads folder. So let's go to Downloads and Extract uh, Phasm. And that gives us this FASM directory. Um, I already have FASM installed, but what you'll want to do is uh, go to your uh, your home directory and go to your bin directory if it exists. Um, if it doesn't exist, then what you'll want to do is uh, go to your home directory and create a directory. So do make dir bin and that will create your bin directory. Um, if you already have it you can go there and um, and what you can do is you can copy that phasm um, that phasm directory you can copy it, copy it into the bin directory as you can see I've already done so this is my bin directory and it already has phasm there and th uh, these are the contents of phasm and you can see that they're identical here so you'll copy that in and once you've copied that to a directory you don't have to put it in the bin directory but it's a nice it's a nice place um, to put uh, your applications um, you can choose somewhere else if you wish um, the point is is to put it someplace where 
uh, you know it will be in the future so you can update the installation. After you've done that, uh, the only other thing that is a nice to have is to add the location of the FASM directory that you've downloaded to your path. Um, and the way that you do that is to change your uh, bash rc file. And you can see down here at the bottom that I have uh, added uh, the path to my uh, FASM directory, which is home bin FASM. I've added, I've added that to my path. And so you just add this line to your dot bash rc file and you'll have uh, your FASM directory located um, in your path. And so what you'll want to do after you uh, add that to your bash rc file is you'll probably want to close your terminal and uh, reopen it uh, because uh, that will reload your bash rc file and you'll be able to type in phasm version and see if you can see phasm. You can also do which phasm and that'll tell you where your phasm uh, assembler is located. So now that we've installed phasm, let's write our first program. So let's go to uh, um, let's go to a space on our computer where we can um, write some programs. So I created this this uh, directory called uh, workspace in my programming directory, and it's empty right now. And uh, I'm going to create a a file called hello.asm, and uh, I'm actually using the uh, the Vim um, text editor, which is a, a terminal text editor, but you can actually use any text editor you wish. You can use Atom or gedit or Notepad or whatever you have available to you. Um, there's no need to use a terminal text editor. I just prefer using Vim. So use whatever uh, text editor you wish um, and create a hello.asm file. And what we're going to do at the beginning here is uh, is we're going to declare our format. Um, so we'll say format uh, elf64 and make it executable. And we'll put three rounds of of optimization to it. Um, what this has told us is we want to create a format of ELF or executable, loadable format, or linkable uh, format, uh, and it's going to be 64-bit. Um, this whole series will be focusing on 64-bit assembly, um, and which also means that you need to have a 64-bit capable machine and a 64-bit operating system. So make sure that when you install um, your Linux on a virtual machine or perhaps the Linux that you already have on your computer or Windows version that you have on your computer, make sure that it's 64-bit. Otherwise, you will not be able to compile uh, these programs. There are some slight differences in, um, in the assembly language uh, between 32 and 64-bit, namely that you actually have eight more registers to work with in 64-bit uh, assembly. But we'll get into that uh, next time. For now, let's continue writing our program. We'll create a segment and make it readable and uh, executable. And this is where we'll put all of our code um, that runs. We'll create one more segment. And this will be where we put our data. And so we'll make it readable and writable. And uh, let's actually go ahead and, and create the, uh, our um, data that we're going to use, which is our hello world string. And so we'll call, um, we'll call this, um, we'll call it message. And what we'll do is we'll um, declare some bytes and we'll say hello world. And the way that we create strings in assembly is to enclose our characters with single quotes. Single quotes tell us that we have a string and the way that we connect these bytes together is with um, a comma. 
So I'm going to put a 10 here, which stands for, which is the ASCII um, decimal number for um, a new line character. And then I'm going to end our string with a zero because in most operating systems, uh, or most operating systems actually have uh, null terminated strings, which just means that um, all strings are marked with a zero at the end to tell that we're at the end of our string. And that's how we uh, declare a string in assembly language. So let's go back up and start writing some code or start writing our main function. So let's create entry main and this means uh, what this does is it defines our entry point for our program. It says that look for the label main and that is the first thing that you want to execute. So let's go ahead and create that label called main and we'll start writing our code. First thing we want to do is to um, load um, the address of our message of our string into the RDI register. And we'll go over registers a little bit later. But for now, we'll just go ahead go ahead and go with the flow. And uh, the next thing that we'll want to do is now that we have our string, we need to tell the computer how long our string is. So let's let's go ahead and do that. We'll load 14. And that is the, uh, we'll, we'll put our length of our message into the RAX register. And the reason why it's 14 is if we go down here and count, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, what, whoops, I messed up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 characters. Um, so yes, the terminating, the null terminator does count as a character, and so does our new line. Our new line counts as a character. So we have 14 characters uh, in our string. The next thing that we'll want to do is um, we'll want to, uh, oh yeah, we want to actually start, um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to tell the operating system that we want to print out our string. So in order to do that, we need to fill out certain special uh, registers with some values uh, and then tell the operating system we want to print the string. So first, let's load some registers with uh, the values that we need. So let's load RDX with um, our RAX value. And so we're moving our RAX value um, to RDX actually, and then we'll move we'll move uh, our RSI value uh, to RDI or RDI to RSI, and then we'll move. Um, we're actually now we can move one into our RDI register, which tells us that we're going to be using standard out. And then we'll move um, one into RAX register, which will tell the operating system that we want to use the system write um, uh, system call or function. Then we can actually call our operating system, and it will go and it will look at uh, it will look and RDX will have the length of our string, RSI will have the address of the first character of our string. Um, RDI will have um, a number indicating uh, that we want to use standard out and RAX will have a number indicating we want to use system we want to write to standard out. And that uh, is how we print out a string in assembly. Uh, the only other thing that we have to do here is exit our program. So after we've printed out our string, we want to properly exit our program. And the way that we do that is we have to fill out some registers, again, for our operating system to look at and um, execute properly. So we'll, um, we'll ZOR the bits in uh, the RDI register to give us an exit code of zero. And if you're not familiar with the logical Boolean logical operations, 
uh, Zor is exclusive or, and when you Zor um, a series of bits with themselves, you get zero. So we're basically zeroing out this register, uh, the RDI register. Then what we'll want to do is um, we'll want to uh, put 60 into the REX register, and that tells the operating system that we're going to use the system.exit, um, that we're exiting our program. And that's it for, for our uh, program. We now have a complete assembly language program that will print Hello World to our standard output. So let's exit this and try it out. Um, so what we'll do is we now have our hello world.asm. So we use phasm, hello world ASM, <clears throat> and we'll compile it. And it looks like it compiled, um, uh, compiled successfully, and we now have a hello executable. If we run it, it uh, it runs hello world, but we got a segmentation fault. So we made some sort of error. Let's see if we can figure out what that error is in our program. Uh, let's see, so we've loaded, let's see, so we've got format, executable, segment, readable, executable, we've set our entry point, we've loaded the address into RDI, RIX gets 14, RDX gets RAX, RSI gets RDI, RDI gets one, RAX gets one. We call a system, ah, we forgot to call our operating system. That's very important. So we did not exit properly. So after we've filled up these registers, RDI and RAX, with our system exit call and our exit code of zero, we need to call our operating system. That's very important. Now we can call phasm on hello.asm compiled successfully. Um, let's run hello and now we have our hello world program running successfully. And so that we've now installed um, Phasm. We've created our first hello world program and executed it successfully. All right, thank you everyone. Thanks for watching and next time we'll actually go over exactly what these th these register things are and how um, a processor works and how an assembler works. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.